Hello, everybody, and welcome to week nine power rankings for this NFL season. Before we dive right into it, I want to quickly say subscribe if you're new. Greatly appreciate it. Leave a like, comment down below your power rankings. You know the whole YouTube spiel. This was a chaotic week in the NFL, so let's waste no more time and let's talk about the quick honorable mentions. Those are the 49ers who had a good win against the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football, a game of which is really highlighted by those first three drives in the second half, which was Niners touchdown, Niners interception, Niners touchdown. That won the game for San Francisco as by the start of the fourth quarter, they were up by 17 against a really demoralized Cowboys team. But they were an honorable mention. The Bears are an honorable mention because that Hail Mary is the most Chicago way to lose a game. And But despite that, the ground game played really well. The defense played really well. Was just lacking stuff from, the, from that off from the passing game. But still overall, the Bears played well enough to win this game. Just need to play a full 60 looking at you, Tyreek Stevenson. The Chargers, another honorable mention. It was a good bounce back game against the Saints, but they only put up 28 against the Saints defense that has given up a lot of points this season to opponents, especially the past few weeks. And the defense played well. I mean, you gave up eight points without the Saints scoring a touchdown. And you get Spencer Rattler benched. Again, it was a great day for the Chargers, good bounce back, but it was against the Saints. The final honorable mention is the Philadelphia Eagles. They played a fantastic game against the Cincinnati Bengals, but it was against the Cincinnati Bengals secondary. I need to see them do it against a high, against a better secondary, and I need them to see, and I need to see them do it consistently. So now to jump into the top ten, number ten is the Minnesota Vikings. It was a very tough loss to the Rams on Thursday Night Football, a game of which they did play decent, decent, uh, decently well in. Sam Darnold had 240 yards through the year with two touchdowns. The main issue was Aaron Jones, and the run game didn't do a whole lot in this one with Aaron Jones himself only having just about 60. And also the pass defense for the Vikings was a bit of a no-show against Matthew Stafford. He had 280 yards through the year and four touchdowns. Plus, Kyron Williams had nearly 100 yards on the 100 yards on the ground. This wasn't a great day for the defense as a whole, but again, particularly that pass defense. And everyone is going to talk about that missed face mask, which lost the Vikings in the game. And in my opinion, I don't think it would have really impacted the, impacted the game if they called it or not. I still don't think the Vikings will drive down the field and get the two-point conversion with the amount of time that they had left. So to me, it's all a mute point. The Vikings come in at number 10. Number 8 is the Baltimore Ravens. I don't understand how they can go from demolishing teams like the Buccaneers and the Bills and then lose into Cleveland, but when Marlon Humphrey goes down, and he's clearly a massive impact to that secondary, since they allowed Jameis Winston to throw up with 330 yards and three touchdowns in this one, I mean, it kind of makes sense, because they did a great job stopping the Cleveland ground game. It was just they could not stop the pass for shit. Lamar still had a good day, though, same with Derrick Henry, so it's not like that the offense didn't show up. It was just the defense being very questionable against a Cleveland offense that... Really has not been good this season, but when Deshaun Watson is no longer behind center, they're going to see some see some improvement. And boy, did they did there this week. The Ravens come in at number nine. Number eight is the Denver Broncos. It was a decent win against Carolina, but like Sean Payton said himself, the defense could have played better. But at the same time, I'm not fully putting a lot on this defense for this week. I mean, yeah, they gave up two passing touchdowns to Bryce Young. But they also picked him off twice, and the offense still played incredibly well through the air. Bo Nix, 284 yards and three touchdowns in the air with a Russian with a Russian touchdown himself. The main issue I had with Denver this game was the run D was the run offense because no like neither Javante Williams or whoever their main other main back is I'm blanking right now. But neither of them had over 50 yards on the ground themselves. Like it's a Panthers defense that isn't the greatest against the run. And I mean, Javante Williams had 17 carries on the day, so I would have liked to see more. But nonetheless, the Broncos come in at number eight. Number seven is the Pittsburgh Steelers. They had a very weird and confusing game against the Giants on Monday Night Football. But they get the win nonetheless. Russell Wilson looked pretty well at moments, but at the same time, the offense looked weird at moments. But that's also just the Steelers for you. The defense played incredibly all around. And I mean, J TJ Watt had a great day. Alex Highsmith, I'm pretty sure it's the other ed the edge rusher, had a great day. And just the Steelers' defense is the Steelers' defense. They won this game by eight. Would have liked to see them winning by more. 
But the first two drives that ended up in field goals for the Steelers could have easily been touchdown drives. Just need to finish those off. And you have a much different story for this one. The Steelers come in at number seven. Number six is the Buffalo Bills. And boy, did they take over Lumen Field on Sunday. Made the 12th man a complete non-factor. Josh Allen had a great day in a game that, in a day that Buffalo got to a lead early and never looked back. Allen had 283 yards on the day with two touchdowns. James Cook had himself a fantastic day, 111 yards with two touchdowns on the ground. And the Buffalo ground defense played extremely, extremely well. Not allowing, only allowing just about 30 rushing yards as a whole against Seattle. Forcing the Seahawks to go one-dimensional with a primary passing game focus. That led to Geno Smith throwing for just over 200 yards and one interception. And Buffalo has a firm, firm grasp on the AFC East that they're probably going to clinch the division by, by the end of November. And yeah, Buffalo is going to be a threat. They come in at number six. Number five, the Houston Texans. They sweep Indianapolis this season with what was a very confusing win for them. Not in the sense that they didn't play well. I mean, DJ Shout had a great bounce, had a great bounce back game. 285 yards and one touchdown through the air. And Joe Mixon had a great day on the ground, just about 100 yards and one touchdown through the on the ground for him. And the defense did a good job against Anthony Richardson, again in the air. Again, by the half, Richardson was 215 with an interception. In the second half, he was 8 for 17 with a touchdown. And just overall, Anthony Richardson is the main talking point for this game because he tapped out at one point in this game, which was just a very weird and confusing thing to happen, but hell, what, what, hell, what, what do I know? Jonathan Taylor did play well, very similar style to Joe Mixon, just about 100 yards and one touchdown on the day with five less carries, so that's a little good, little sprinkle there. But, I mean, Houston had a game they kind of needed after last week, so they, they come in at number five. Number four is the Washington Commanders, and the football gods are finally shining down on D.C. It has been a long while since they've done that. And even with a very weird game, a game that the offense didn't play the greatest, the defense did a good job against the pass, but really struggled against the ground. They were in this one till the very end, and they got that clutch 60-plus yard Hail Mary through the air from Jaden Daniels, even with his rib injury, able to uncork that one down the field into the end zone. It was a very gritty win. For the commanders and it's a type of win that they have needed this season i feel in order to show that hey we can be true contenders come playoff time so we'll see how well we'll see how this win translates to the rest of the season for them either way they come in at number four the packers are number three it was a back-to-back game winning field goals for the packers thanks to brandon mcmanus who is on his second week with the team and they did a great job adapting the game plan once jordan love went down in this one Malik Willis came in and did what he needed to do. Josh Jacobs had a great day and they relied on it when Malik Willis came in. And Josh Jacobs, 127 yards on the ground, two touchdowns, just an incredible day. And then as a whole, passing-wise, they had 250 yards through the air. A pretty solid day, all things considered. The main thing is we want to see kind of what the status is with what the status is with Jordan Love. It is currently listed as a groin injury, so it is it is something to keep an eye on. But with how Josh Jacobs played and with how their defense has been playing, Xavier McKinney is by far, I know I've said this multiple times, he is by far the most underrated sign in this past offseason. He has made play after play, week after week for this Packers defense, completely changing the way they play, and has done wonders for this team. And because of that, they come in at number three. Number two is the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a very tough finish against the Raiders. And I kind of expected that, but the good thing is Mahomes had, a, had finally had a decent day. 250 yards through the air, two touchdowns, did throw that one interception, but it's a mute point because he has thrown down an interception each of these first eight weeks. The other main point is that Travis Kelsey finally had himself a breakout day. 90 yards receiving on 10 receptions plus a touchdown. It was a great day for him. The main issue is this Chiefs ground game being basically non-existent since since Pacheco went down, but that's also kind of to be expected. And that's why you've kind of been waiting to see some of these other guys have breakout days like Travis Kelsey. But again, the deep with how well their defense has been playing this season, 
it doesn't really matter. They're, they're the final undefeated team this season for a reason, and that reason is their incredible defense, so they come in at number two. Finally, number one is the Detroit Lions. The Sonic and Knuckles duo, Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery, playing well once again. Jameer Gibbs, 127 yards and a touchdown on the ground, with that touchdown being a 70-yarder. And David Montgomery had one touchdown through the ground, and he had one touchdown through the air. He passed for a touchdown in this one. And even with Jared Goff throwing for just under 100 yards on the day, he had three passing touchdowns himself. This Lions team will beat you in any way possible. Trick plays, efficient passing days, efficient ground games, very gritty, hard-nosed football kind of days because they have a kicker who is damn near unstoppable this season. And the defense even played really well in this one as well. Mason, Ru Mason Rudolph picked off twice. Four total turnovers forced by this defense. The Lions are a new breed this season. We thought last year was really good for them. They have stepped up this season in their style of play and their efficiency is a fantastic to watch. So they, they cap things off at number one. So a quick little recap here. The Minnesota Vikings are at number 10. The Baltimore Ravens are at 9, Denver Broncos at 8, Pittsburgh Steelers at 7, Buffalo Bills at 6, 5 is the Houston Texans, Washington Commanders at 4, 3 is the Green Bay Packers, 2 the Kansas City Chiefs, and number 1, the Detroit Lions. Thank you all for tuning in. Again, subscribe, leave a like, really appreciate it, all those things. See you all next time. Have yourselves a damn good one. Peace.